I feel like people from Chicago either hate him because they know him or they, they're obsessed with him. Nah, I, I'm not obsessed with Jordan. I do think he's the greatest of all time. Hmm. But my Bulls fandom supersedes my, you know, Jordan fandom. So Kobe or LeBron isn't a debate for you? No, nah, I, th- I think Jordan is, is the greatest of all time. Just not only, not only like, uh, I think pound for pound what he was able to do exceeds what Kobe and, and LeBron did longer term. Like, I, I think, uh, you know, you know, because they played longer than Jordan did. Mm-hmm. I, th- I think LeBron has passed Jordan uh, in, really? terms of like, in terms of like, uh, but sure, I don't know how long. And I'm just talking about Bulls Jordan. Uh, mm-hmm. Not Wizard back, Jordan? I know he came back to the Wizards and then, you know, I was just like, all right. But if he didn't, do you think he would have had a perfect career? I think, I think if he would have. First of all, I think if he would have never went did that baseball thing and leave, uh, I think the Bulls probably would have had eight in a row. Yeah. And uh, there's no disrespect to the Houston Rockets. They got they squeezed the two in while Jordan was, you know, pretty much in my – Jordan came back, but he, you know, with the full comeback. And then um, I think they would have got eight in a row. You think that uh, – you, you take into account – I saw a clip the other day of Jordan playing and how rough it was. Like, niggas really getting socked in the face on purpose. Oh, man. <laughs> you take that into account too? Yeah, the, like the, the different physical play of back then. Yeah. The fact that, the fact that um, you know, Jordan or Kobe – I mean, uh, LeBron or Kobe weren't able to string together. I mean, you know, Kobe had the championships with Shaq. But Shaq is one of the best centers to ever play the game. And then when it was Kobe without Shaq, you know, he, he wasn't able to string together that as many wins as Jordan. But Jordan had Pippen, though. Jordan did have Pippen. You don't think Kobe or anybody else had a Pippen? I mean, when you when you had when you had Shaq and Kobe, that, that's a dynamic duo. But I, I don't think Kobe had a real Pippen. <laughs> when he was able to win the, the championship, not on his own, but pretty much on his own. Pat, unlisted. I, just, I, I mean, switched it to unlisted, yeah. Oh, shit. How do I always do that? I always <laughs> do that. I was like, where's the chat? <laughs> <laughs> I always do that. Wait, but I, I had already posted the link. Should, I, should it change over automatically? No, I, just went, I just went to edit and switched it over. Okay. That's, the chat's up now. Okay, cool. Cool, 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 cool. Tony Baker, do you want the link? Oh, yes, yes. Yeah, email me that link, Playboy. Don't tell me what to do, please. Email me the link, man. Sick of your attitude. And we could call this uh, farting in front of your significant other. Okay. (laughs) Gotcha. (laughs) All right. Uh, 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 Tony, this real quick. They don't the the alien stuff doesn't pull them in, so I gotta I gotta ease them in. Oh shit, that's funny. So I always uh for the um for the live one, I just tell if we have a guest like DIY us and, and the guest, and then I always put the title on the one that I post for Thursday, but. Cause I, I know, oh, like, this is just the this is just the live. Got this it. Is just the live. Yeah, okay. I always change the title up for for the Thursday one because shit, we we say we're gonna get to that, but then the conversation get good. <laughs> like with Billy, Billy was. I kid me. you, I kid you not. Ever since we started doing these on Zoom, I touch about two to three. Like I touch three out of like ten topics when we do these things. It really be like our conversations be extended. I never get to the other stuff, which is good. You know what's crazy though? It, it works like that because we have um, a prior friendship and prior rapport. Because right. like when I did the the word in his heart with Ti, I feel like it would have been ten times better if we had Y'all been knew in the studio. Other? Yeah, or we had been in the studio next to each other because we can kind of play off each other's energy. But yeah. doing it with the Zoom and you can't control the background and it's his first time and you know that interaction, I think it 
you know, it, it uh, hindered how well we could have performed had we been in the studio. Though. You know what's also crazy? I realized that our, our all deaf with Tony uh, bringing up how much we talk over each other, I realized that our rhythm is just like, mm-hmm. so when you don't have, like when I went on Billy's podcast, I only knew Billy and not the other two guys. Mm-hmm. And their podcast just be having like, so much dead space, not dead space, but just like areas where no one's talking. Whereas, yeah. as Tony pointed out, like we overlap in Squadcast, whereas other people just kind of like talk, break, talk, break, talk, break, talk, break. So it I might most, our rhythm. I think most people, they, um, like if one person's telling a story, the other people kind of listening and they're digesting the information, thinking that if they would have did it that way right. and so on and so forth. But with us and the nature of our, like, industry, we are listening, but we're also thinking of a jab. As soon as, like, that person finishes, it's like, I bet you were hungry, fat ass. Like, it's always so we could be right on the tail end, and that could be the mm-hmm. button of that story versus something else. So it's, it's, a, it's, it's completely different, but I, I have noticed that with other podcasts as well, too. Mm-hmm. What up, patrons? Mm-hmm. What's going on? They said they're going to uh, start a fund for me to get more shirts. You know what, guys? <laughs> I got five quarantine shirts that I'm cycling. I, there's, wh- why? <laughs> why? I got my favorites. Uh, uh, this flannel is washed every three days and repeat. <laughs> you got a quarantine shirt. <laughs> The exactly. shirt that you watch porn in during quarantine. <laughs> 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 All right, you guys ready to get started? Yeah, yeah. why not? That's oh, a silly ass opening. <clears throat> John Williams and boom, boom, boom. share. Tony, is this the is this the uh, unveiling of the, the the bare lip? Have you been on camera since? Um, I did it yesterday, so may, maybe this might be the reveal. I'm not even sure. I don't like it. <laughs> yeah, honest with you, I hate naked lip Tony. I'm sick of his shit too. Y'all ain't ready for naked lip Pat. <laughs> Nobody I is. Like, I look like a chihuahua. <laughs> no, for real though. When I when I cut it, I look uh Puerto Rican. Would you shave it for a bet? How much? I don't like the long drink you just took. I don't know if it's a money bet or it's like it's just a challenge bet. Like, I bet you can't do this. If you do it, then you get this. If you can't, then you got to it. money, no. I'll oh. save for money. Oh, okay. I'll save for challenge money, not just for respect of my people. <laughs> like, like what, $50? No. <laughs> save my mustache for the 200 Tony, what did you get off your phone? Shit. Hey, man, you know what I'm saying? I'm trying to post the, the Patreon. You still ain't posted it yet? I, po- I posted it on the Patreon, but I have to let people know on Instagram that we over here. Oh, okay. Sick of your shit. I got to start getting movie suggestions from Tony. Tony, you watch anything fun- good lately? Um, I just watched uh, Extraction on Netflix. That's that was good. I oh, that's that. when you have to go overseas to get that kid out. Mm-hmm. I only saw the sniper scene. That shit was dope. Yeah, man. Yeah, they they cool. they actually got it. They got that one right. I don't know if that was a Netflix original or Netflix is just like hosting it. But it they they, they did that one right. I enjoyed that. What you think about it, Tony? I liked it, man. Like um. The action sequences was just oh superb. I was like, man, this, yeah. it was just like, please incorporate this more often in future Marvel movie action sequences because it, it was just. And then I looked up, I looked up the director of this movie. He had only done sh- shorts before, but he's been the stunt coordinator for uh, Civil War, Winter Soldier, um, Infinity War. Is this Marvel Extraction? No, no, no. no. But, but no. The, the guy, the guy that um, directed it, and one of the Russo brothers produced it. He, this is pretty much. I can tell it's just like, yo, let's let this guy direct the movie, and then this is the result. He's Perfect. been doing 
all the stunt choreography for all these Marvel joints. And, and when you look at his resume, it's the it's the better of the Marvel action joints hmm. and involved in. So it's like, what was he doing that you're you're hoping he keeps doing? Like, what was it like a style or? Oh, the style of it, the way the way they shot it, how gritty the action felt, mm -hmm. how it moved, flowed. Like when you look at when you look at like Winter Soldier, Civil War. When you look at those action sequences, you can you can tell Marvel really elevated the action game up with those because it, it was more of a. Uh, and the thing I like about Captain America is that he doesn't have like you know a flying armor suit or stuff you had to really cgi up he's yeah. just a guy that can fight real good yeah and so that's the kind of action that's dope to me and so when, when they fought in like civil war when they, that fight scene where they went to winter soldiers apartment and they were both fighting off the the swat team and then black mm -hmm. Panther come and chase them down that whole action sequence was dope it was just like yo even the elevator scene Oh, the elevator scene! The elevator scene was legit. Even even in the beginning, where uh, Captain America was on that ship, and they Woo! were just, man, it was just yeah. like, hey, yeah. the first the first seven minutes of the second Captain America was better than the whole first Captain America. To me. Absolutely. Which Absolutely. which Avenger or uh, Marvel character had the best fight scenes? Do you think it was Captain America? Absolutely. Yeah. Out of all of them. Yeah, I think so. I th and it's, it's really because of what Tony said, because he had no special powers, there was no CGI to take away from the action, so it had to be like hand-to-hand -hand combat when it <laughs> came to the fight. That's very true. Robert Downey Jr. did not have to learn no martial arts. <laughs> he just had to do this. He just... <laughs> it is funny. When you look at that scene where Winter Soldier, like, escapes from the thing, and, and like, uh, so he catches Tony outside of the armor, and all he had was, like, his little hand glove thing. Mm -hmm. and he, tried to, he tried to like kind of like fight Winter Soldier hand to hand. Oh, right, with just the hand part. <laughs> All he had was the hand part. Winter Soldier dismantled him so quick. <laughs> and then Black Widow and the other Shield girl had to like jump in, but he had just socked him out real quick. <laughs> but if you think about it, if in the armor he is doing martial arts, so technically the Tony outside of the armor should know how to fight, unless the armor is literally doing the fighting. Which yeah, I don't totally think it is. Tony does have some some fighting because you know in Iron Man two he was like you see him training with a uh, dude and like he, he did, like, so he does like and then even when they jumped him at the end of uh, Civil War he was still kind of hanging with them on just a fight move yeah it didn't seem like it the highlights he was getting whooped that oh. scene they always play where they're trading shields and shit <laughs> holding hands and stomping that nigga out they worked him. Yeah. yeah, he was basically he was basically fighting two Mike Tyson's. So even if you're good enough to go head to head with one one Mike Tyson, two of them are gonna work your ass over. Yeah, man, they did Tony dirty, man. Cause yeah. Tony Tony had a legit beef. Yeah. What do you mean? Oh, cause he, he killed his dad. He killed his parents. Yeah. And he was mad. He was like, "Yo, Steve, why you why you sticking up for this dude? This your man's. Yeah. This your man's." Yep. <laughs> Tony had a legit beef, man. Hey, the dude uh, who got his dad killed shouldn't be the nigga getting jumped, though. <laughs> <That's> right. <laughs> like, damn. Tony, Tony was uh, Kevin Hart in uh, 40 Year Old Virgin. He was like, hey, is this your man? <laughs> I'm going to come back and kill him and you. <laughs> Both y'all niggas. <laughs> that was my favorite part of that movie. That's how I knew Kevin was going to Oh, my God. Oh, that was easily one of my favorite scenes. That's probably my favorite Kevin Hart scene in film. That ain't exactly. yeah. Hey, yeah. Using a whole lot of big words right now, so I'm going to take it as disrespect. <laughs> Watch your mouth and help me with the scene. I don't I, know any other classic scenes like that now that I think about it. That, you know, that, we don't get them anymore. Many, with that many quotables? Yeah. Watch your mouth and help me with the scene. Okay, okay. Now you was looking for a nigga? Nigga here. Nigga right. here now. <laughs> it, was it was a perfect back and forth. It was perfect. I love Romney. Uh, Romney? Rom Romney. Rom I love the other black guy in that. The, 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 smooth, the smooth head bald dude? Yeah. And you know what's so bad? I'm subscribed to his like channel. So like, he just sent an email out today about a video he posted. but. I always mess up his name. What? How do you say it? Tony? <laughs> Romany? Romany Malcolm? Yeah. Oh, Romany? I always put the L in the beginning. I mean, I always put L in the first name, but I always forget that it's Ain't no Malcolm. L. 
<laughs> I know it's L and Malco in his last name, but I always want to put an L in his first name. All right, well, I got a question for you guys because right. you guys are uh, you guys are in some relationships, right? Mm-hmm. There was a there was a study um, that said that farting in front of a partner leads to stronger and healthier relationships. And this was done, this was a relationship guru named Cynthia Powell. He basically said that couples who get over the initial embarrassment of breaking wind in front of each other early in a relationship are more likely to stay together and live healthier lives. Do you agree with this and or fart in front of y'all partners? <laughs> <laughs> um, I can see why it would strengthen the bonds. <laughs> If she can handle you at your worst smelling. Right. <laughs> that, that, I mean, that, and that sums it up. Like, you know, that that's somebody, that's a lot of vulnerability to be able to be like, all right, I got to let this one go. And I, I'm secure enough to let it happen and know that they aren't going to leave me. So therefore you blanket it in the security of that. So it's like, all right, we really in this. <laughs> but you also said... You also said I could see how it would work. <laughs> but, but at the same time, you know, if you got those those putrid death zombie land farts, <laughs> you know, I can see the other person be like, you know, I can't. They could be mm-hmm. completely turned off. Mm-hmm. Like completely. So I think guys are guys don't care as much as as, as the ladies do. Like my wife, we've been together for seven years, known each other for 15, and she still is committed to the fact that she doesn't poop or poop. Like she waits, I leave the house, and then she takes phantom poops. They'd be the quickest poops wow. ever, because I tried to come back and catch her, and it'd be like nothing, no remnants or nothing, no smell. Yeah, you check for remnants? <laughs> Dang, man, I be looking, I'm like, I try to catch her, but she, I either that or she ain't shit. Which is also equally as bad because that means she's gonna die. <laughs> Man. But me, I shit with the door open. I light an incident, but I don't, like, I don't like I don't like to be closed in, man. The ensuite that we have is kind of small. What? I don't like to be closed in, man. I'm no more closed doors. So I leave That's it open. so uh, inconsiderate. Nobody else want to be. It's so not nobody, the, nobody it's else want to. See- it's not the guest bathroom. It's the main. It's my. It's my ensuite. It's in my bedroom. So nobody on the outside can can hit. And I light a candle. I mean, light it, light it instant. And I also do courtesy flushes. Candle? You couldn't do candle? The, can- <laughs> the candle takes longer to get in. The instant burns faster. No, 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 no. I meant you couldn't say candle. It ain't, ain't no trip ups in there. I accidentally said candle. I meant instant though. Oh. So I, just, I called myself like, nope, not candle. Instant. Man, the door for the bathroom ain't for you. It's for everybody else. Man. Doors open, mate. Ah man, that you just wrong for that. E forty style doors open, mate. Oh no, I can see if you home alone. All right, fine, but you know, no nah, man, close that door. <laughs> door she be so mad. She come in and slam the door. I'm like, don't don't slam no doors in this house. And what about did. what about uh, farting though? You be ripping them in front of her? Not really. I I ain't really. Only time I get like super gassy like that were. It's one of those things. It's like if I'm doing like a whole lot of smoothies. I mean, like three meals a day. It's just smoothies. But typically, I I don't have to do it like that. No. That was re- weirdly specific, but okay. Tony, you be farting around Sabrina? You know what I do? I be sliding them off on the sneak tip. But now I, I probably won't as much now because my, my last one in front of her it got revealed, and it was a <laughs> real bad one. <laughs> you talk about this Friday. Man, you, know, you you were trying to hide it, and then it was loud. Yeah, I tried to just you know s- slide one off, and then uh, you know what happened? I I think I I think I slid <laughs> it off, and then she had just came in there, and I was just like, man, it was like mid slide off, and then she came in and, and laid on the other side of the bed, and I was just like, shoot! So I had to tell her like, yo, that's what happened. I I I, I let it off. She wasn't in there when I started laying it off, and then she came in there. Well, that don't count. Now, I'm talking about loud, like, when people Sabrina right there, boom. No, I, I don't feel comfortable enough to just be farting while she right there. Farron Farron Forsen has uh, sleep a lot. So she's not in control of it, but 
She does it so much, Kendall named her Slumber Toots. Wow. Slumber Toots. It's a good one. It's fitting. You know, I died. <laughs> those are like two, those are like two good alternative words to put yeah. in that instead of like a sleep farter. That's what I would have gone. I would have been took it. Yeah. Slumber, Slumber Toots is hilarious and I want to get it put on a jersey for it. That's so fun. then what about the reverse? What about if Sabrina or Farron just bop bop in front of y'all? I think it would catch me off guard just because she's never done it at this point. Like, like literally like 15 years and I've never heard her do it like intentionally. Only in the sleep, in the slumber realm. The slumber cues. <laughs> Here's my thing about farting though. I, don't, I feel like you shouldn't do it around anybody. So that that's how I hold farts. Like you know, if anybody's in there, I'm not gonna. I'm not just gonna let it rip. Mm. That could that could be women, men, the, the boys, whatever. It's just like I don't want to subject nobody to this because you know it's embarrassing. Like if you let one rip and it's a it's a doozy, <laughs> you'd be like, but God damn, man, they looking at you like who died in there? You had like, a funeral in your stomach. I came up with cousins who would try to outdo each other on a fart tip. So, like, it was a game to us when we were kids. Like, younger, like, you know, you're like 10, 11, 12, on up to like 16. We was just, and the better ones were the quiet ones. So, those were always the killers. The quiet ones that came out, like, like, I don't know why they were Man. If it seeps out, it's going to smell more. And I don't know why. Oh, my God. It's like a fog. It's because it's heavier, it's more dense. <laughs> my <laughs> sits. A normal fork comes out like like that. This is a lot of air. But yeah. the, the quiet ones, the discs, they come out like. Mm -hmm. And that's <laughs> pure, pure gas from. Oh the, man, it's pure. It's like. <laughs> oh, it's like a gas leak. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, that's more like brah. But then the cheeks are involved, and it's just. Like, oh. <laughs> is that what that stutter is? The cheeks close. <laughs> Your cheeks <laughs> definitely <laughs> calm down there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but the gas seat, that's that's from the that's your body like yo, we gotta get this out of here. <laughs> that's the one you couldn't stop it if you wanted to. When it's seeping like that, yeah, yeah. you can't even close the cheeks up. It's like, nah, I'm gone. I'm right. So y'all y'all partners just start doing it. Every 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 you know, couple times a day, just bop bop and you in the room. Do you talk to them? Do you just say, I don't think this is working out? Do you just let it slide? Do you get used to it? Do you let the bond strengthen? It would be so out of the out of character, I would have to pull it to the side. Like, yo, what the f everything going all right at home? Like, right. I'm, at, I'm at home. I'm still asking, is everything all right at home? Like, what the fuck is going on? What's gotten into you? Yeah. Why well, does change behavior? Like, you farting hard. Like, you know, you really going in there. And then it comes down to what's it smell like on the on the, on the the day to day? Oh, uh, so yeah. if it was loud, but it didn't smell bad, you'd be cool with it? Yeah, like the, the smell is what angers me more than <laughs> man. You ever been in a car with somebody and it was hot and somebody farted and then they don't want to? They don't one. They don't tell you. Two. They don't want to own up to it. It was like it's just me and you, and I know it wasn't me. Like man, I don't know. Tell you, I ain't fart. I'm like fam, man, I, I know when I fart. Nah, I'm good. A I'm hot good. car fart will make you. I will. We'll, we won't be friends no more. Oh man, my sons used to fart in the car all the time and deny it. I was like, one of y'all farted. <laughs> then just people say it's like, oh, I think we're just driving past something. Like, oh, <laughs> they used to do it all the time, be hot, and they would never roll the window down. Somebody in the chat said I was raised in an open <laughs> fart household. I've never heard that. I'm I'm good. Don't do it around me. Man. That's worse. I like the whole women don't poop lie. <laughs> hey man, listen. I think I think. We've just become accustomed to it, but I mean, if, if a woman genuinely didn't poop or, or use a bathroom, I'd be concerned about her. I'd be like, fam, you got to go get checked out. That's not, that's not normal. It's normal that you do do it. It's weird if you don't. I used to be horribly ashamed of farting, so I wouldn't do it. And this, this was like for years. Horribly ashamed? <laughs> yeah, because I was like, man, I don't want to be farting out here, so I would never fart. But, but... I paid the price because I would always have these horrible stomach pains because it, it was unreleased gas. Yes. Man, I get it out. I will I will literally I'll step outside and like like part my legs so it's a clean getaway. When oh, you yeah. got when it's gotta go to brrr, like it stays in your clothes. So if you come back in, it's gonna linger, it's gonna 
Right. That's what they call crop. Uh, what do they call it? Crop dusting. Yeah, and it just follow you back. I go outside, just lift one leg, just spread it so it's got a clean getaway. You know what I'm saying? Let it get out of there. Shake a little bit. Make sure it's out of my pants. Then go inside, man. Spray some cologne on my ass and keep it moving. Oh, wow. You spray cologne on your ass? Not on my actual ass, like the seat of my pants. It's like, you know. That's your ass. I mean, I, was, I just wanted to make sure it wasn't like naked. I didn't want you to think raw ass. That not my ass, pants. the seat of my pants. Yeah, seat of my pants. Like, on the outside, though. Like, just on the pockets. I'm just saying, I'm not. From the outside looking in, that definitely looks like uh, spraying your ass. I wasn't doing it in front of nobody. Uh, Shut up. What you be doing, Pat? Who you be farting in front of? I don't. I try not to fart in front of anybody, and I would expect the. I like your. I like your your theory. Just don't fart in front of people. Yeah, it's just you know. Come on, man. And so, then it's like, ugh, if if a girl lets one rip and it smells horrible, I'm gonna automatically assume that other parts of her doesn't smell great either. That's man, bad. I, That's I remember. Bad. Um, I went down to Dallas, Texas, one time for uh, a comedy something. Can't remember, and it was this chick down there who was uh she was a comedian too, <clears throat> and I think she didn't have a place to stay, so she was bouncing with people, hotels, whatever like that. And she uh she was like, hey, can I crash on the couch? I was like, yeah, okay, that's whatever. Uh, we were sitting there rapping, and she just like, excuse me, I thought she was taking a phone call. She went to the bathroom. I thought in the, she was on the phone. I thought she was taking a phone call, and so uh she was in there for a minute. And she comes back out, she sits down, and I was like, well, shit, the uh, next show about to start. I'm gonna go right ahead over there. So I'm gonna go to the restaurant real quick. I went in the bathroom. Bro, when I tell you the shit that she did in there was ungodly, she would literally did the devil's work in this bathroom. Didn't warn me, didn't, 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 didn't tell me, hey, go to the one downstairs. Didn't try to like, like turn the shower on, like no matches, no, bro. I tell you, shower. I had never, I had, yeah, the, 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 the steam and the heat from the shower, like for some reason eliminates the smell or helps with the smell. I thought it made it worse. I've never, I've never had it done where it made you it never worse. never farted in the shower and was like, God damn, that's Well, I mean, that's, that's because you're enclosed in the, enclosed in, in the shower. With the, <laughs> no, Pat, the shower, the shower helps, nigga. <laughs> but bro, the shit that she did in that bathroom, though, I had to ask her to leave. She couldn't stay there. She couldn't stay oh, there. Oh, you around? just came out. What'd you say? Oh, you gotta get up. You gotta go. You gotta go. You were like, that's just, that's, that's so inconsiderate. Like, not, not even warn me. You well, know what it smell like. You 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 like to poop with the door open. You talking about consideration now? Come on, man. <laughs> my pooping with the door is like with family, bro. I had never met this shit before. I was trying to do her a solid. So so because it's family, they should be able to handle you pooping with the door because they me pooping with, me pooping with the door open is in the bed bedroom with the bedroom door closed. Okay, so the most it would get is like by the TV, but the incense <laughs> catch it. The incense catch it, Tony. The double standard. Double standard. She probably don't poop anymore. That probably scarred her for life. No, 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 no. I can tell that was, she's a regular at doing that. She just be going to nice restaurants just to do it in a nice restaurant. All right, well, enough about farting, because we got some crazy stuff to get to, man. <laughs> we got everything from UFOs being officially declassified. We got secret underground cinemas in Paris. We got dogs that blow up tanks. We got an accidental millionaire in Australia. And we got an Ecuador woman who was cremated and then came back to life. A whole Wait, bunch of stuff on this. What? Show. Oh, yes. Today's topics are so crazy. I'm saying them up top to get everybody excited. But wow. before I do that, mm -hmm. um, does anybody have any uh, experience with CBD? That would be me. That'd be you. I dabble mm -hmm. in um, like the oils. Okay. Oils, I guess. Yeah. Oils are oils are dope. I I just got on uh, CBD because a whole bunch of stuff wasn't working for my dog. She had like a rash, uh, mm -hmm. and everybody told me to switch over to CBD because she was taking pills at first. I don't like giving my dog pills, uh, but she started taking CBD, cleared up. She doesn't even have that rash anymore. So I'm all in. And now here comes Hempland USA, America's number one CBD company. Uh, as an industry veteran, Hempland USA has produced the world's highest quality organic CBD oil since 2014, which was before CBD was popular. And they've been around for like six years. They're first to grow and manufacture their uh, CBD entirely in the U.S. 
Um, they're one of the few companies that controls their supply chain. One of the, they offer the highest quality products at competitive prices. And the best thing about Hempland USA is that they don't cut corners when it comes to quality. Uh, they want you to experience their ultra premium CBD products at fair prices. Um, they offer some of the highest strength CBD products available with a lower price per milligram uh, than almost all other companies out there. And the bulk discount pricing can't be beat. There's discounts up to 30% off all year around. Hipland uh, uh, USA is all about value. Um, so when I say all about value, I mean all about value, which is why you get more CBD for less money. And their signature line of full spectrum, the THC free, the enhanced CBD products are third party lab tested and are as pure and effective as nature intended. Um, and also let me tell you about their money back guarantee and 24 hour customer home support. Uh, what other CBD company that you guys know of has this? None. I tell you none, my friends. Hip Lab USA is the real deal and they are so confident that you'll love their products that they back every sale with 100% money back guarantee at any time, no questions asked. Yes, sir. And, uh, you know, definitely they have a new product called ECS5. That's ECS5. It's a, new, a unique blend of black pepper, clove, hops, rosemary, and jujube. Uh, and it supercharges the CBD so that your body can actually process it better. And ever since using that, I've just been feeling, you know, more balanced, focused. And it's just an overall sense of well-being. So um, the, uh, basically, if you want your own Hemp Land USA's uh, premium CBD tinctures, soft gels, and topicals, they're available only at Hemp Land USA. Once again, that's Hemp, Hemp Land USA. They have higher potest, potency and lower price uh, per milligram of CBD than anything else I've seen out there. And uh, there's a higher potency of CBD uh, that provides better value and is more effective than lower strength products that don't really do anything with uh, for you. All right. And right now you can take 20% off of your next order by using the link hemplandusa.com forward slash dam. That's H-E-M-P-L-A-N-D-U-S-A.com forward slash D-A-M. And don't forget to use the dam uh, promo code at the checkout for that 20% off. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, all right, moving right along. Right uh, along. One of the craziest things, this, this, I think this quarantine is so crazy that sometimes these headlines, which would be bigger if there wasn't so much going on, are happening, and it doesn't seem like it's getting a lot of, like, it just doesn't seem like it's getting a lot of attention as opposed to it, what, the attention it would have got, like, six, you know, seven months ago. Uh, but the U S Navy literally declassified three videos yesterday. Um, and what that means is they, they sort of like backed them. So there were three videos that dropped over the last 20 years, uh, that showed, um, U F U S Navy, uh, fighter pilots, uh, doing training exercises and seeing these crafts that they did not know what they are. Now, mind you, these, these are people in the U S military who studied, how to fly, all this stuff, machines, planes. They studied all this stuff, and they're literally on video saying, what the heck is this? I'm going to show you guys in a second. But um, they were, it was dropped. You know, there's, um, uh, the footage was captured by U.S. Navy pilots, and it shows mysterious wingless aircraft tra uh, aircrafts traveling at hypersonic speeds with no visible means of propulsion. Uh, there's a UFO research groups that published the clips, and... Uh, yeah, and, and the, but they weren't, like, the U.S. Navy didn't declassify them. Mm -hmm. um, they were basically not cleared for official release. Uh, there's three clips. One's called Fleur, one's called Go Fast, and one's called Gimbal. Uh, and as of yesterday, it was officially acknowledged by the U.S. Navy. Uh, now, this does not prove that aliens exist, but it is proving that these UFOs, which means unidentified flying object, um, we're official. They're not fake. They're not made up. And when you see the, the, the pilot's reactions, um, it, it's, it's concerning. Because if y'all don't know what it is, <laughs> how are we? So you guys see this? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So here's, here's the, uh, the official UFOs. Look at that thing, dude. That's not how that's though, is it? It's not. I do. I don't know. Well, the first thing. It's spinning. 
All right, here's the second one. That thing was rolling. See, they can't even keep up with it until they lock in. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> that thing moving. Masking that fear with with laughter. <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's the the crazy part is they don't they didn't go. What is that? Is that an M sixty eight forty seven seven? You know, what I mean, they had no guesses. They were just like to hear them say, "What the fuck is that?" And I was like, "Bro, you in the Navy? <laughs> what are you talking about?" Yeah. Official shock on 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 the reaction. Like, dude, that's when you know. All professionalism went out the window, everything. Like, dude, what the fuck is that? <laughs> right. <Yeah. laughs> it's nuts, man. And it, it only makes me think, I saw, this, uh, I saw this documentary about this dude who was in the Navy, and he was basically saying that they, they were out on, at the deepest parts of the ocean at like midnight, 3 a.m., no moon, no light at all. And so they were just always seeing the weirdest stuff because they're literally the only humans on Earth besides like deep sea fishermen who are out in these like desolate humanless places at the weirdest parts of the day. And he was saying that he saw everything from the ocean opening up and aircrafts what? flying in and out. Yeah, like wild yeah. stuff like that. Like there's stuff going on in the sea, just wild stuff. And he said that every time some of those happened, the whole crew was brought inside and they were debriefed. And what that means is like, this is what you didn't say. This is, excuse me, this is what you didn't see. This is what didn't happen. This is what you can't say anything about. And this is what will happen if you do say something about. And it's like, he uh, started seeing all these papers coming through his desk. I gotta find, I, I talk about this story all the time. Cause I was just like, bro, what the ocean open? Um, I wanna say this is the, the same guy. I'll, I don't wanna, I don't wanna say the wrong name. So I'll, 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 uh, I'll put it in the comments. Uh, but it's crazy. Like I feel like the Navy out of everybody is the one government organization besides the CIA and all those people that are like literally seeing these things all the time. Mm. That's yep. crazy. The ocean, the ocean is huge, bro. The ocean is huge. You think about how big a blue whale is, bro. It's, they, they were bigger than like dinosaurs and they've been around since then. And we don't even see that many of them, but the ocean can house them. Like that's how big the ocean is. Oh, easy. It's, mm. it's, it's, the ocean's this, scary. This is what blows my mind about the ocean. Like when you when you think of a drive from New York to Los Angeles, just think about how much land that covers, and like you being on the road for days and right. days, and days, and like it's just land. It's like man, the ocean is bigger than all of that. You can you can put two or three or four coast to coast trips back to back like that. Just all ocean and underneath all of that. More ocean. <laughs> is life. Underneath all of that is just Ew. in there. Ew. So wait, what you just said coast to coast. Like at some point, if we were to go down in California, would there be ocean underneath? Or would it just go into the core of the go to straight like it was just land all the way to the core like are we floating that i don't know because, i've always wondered that like if yeah. the land mass how, how far can we dig yeah before we strike water yeah. would we strike water though i don't know i don't know i don't even want to sit here and, and try to <laughs> because yeah. if we if we if there's ocean like if it's a bunch of land and then at some point ocean and then it hits this the, the center of the earth, there could be some stuff swimming underneath us that's even worse. <laughs> if you think about it, that's that's even more terrifying. Like what's living underneath swimming underneath Africa? Right. Because <laughs> you know they, you know the the old cartoons and somebody would dig and they would end up in China or something like that. It goes right through. But obviously that's not because you would hit the core before that. But like. Oh, you'd burn yeah, alive. We, yeah, are we are we a floating land mass, or is it connected to? I mean, it has to be floating for. No, it don't, because at some point the ocean has a floor bottom, right? Right. And then you dig into that, and you start going uh, into the earth. Yeah. So if That's if 
California or wherever, you know, wherever you are, goes all the way down to the, the, uh, well, I guess. To the I, I, I feel like this, this is just me kind of speculating. I feel like it, it, it all goes down to the, to the surface of the ocean. Yeah. And, you know, it cracks and moves. That's why we get continental drift and all of that. But I still think it goes all the way down to like the surface of the, so like if you keep digging, if you start in the middle of LA and keep going all the way down, I feel like you'll just go through, through crust and crust and crust and crust until you get to like, you know, the mantle piece. I, I don't, I don't know if we would necessarily hit the ocean on a pure dig. Yeah. Cause I'm, I'm now I'm thinking about beaches and it seems like the floor of the ocean comes all the way up to the mm. beach. You yeah. Know? But then it's like, like, I don't know. If you hit, if you hit water, wouldn't the water rush through and push you back up? Cause it would try to fill that gap. I would think. So it would have to be, like, we would have to be connected to another man. Like, it, it can't be ocean under us. Because I'm just thinking about, like, let's say I was a fish and I'm <laughs> approaching um, the coast of, of North America. I just feel like I wouldn't be able to go underneath. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> I wouldn't be able to go underneath the United States to keep going. <laughs> like, I would feel like, that's oh, that was true. Okay. Get the hell out of here. That's true. That's hella true. I think so. Okay. I, yeah. I think we just we just solid. Well, then speaking of underneath, and this is my favorite uh favorite story of the day. Tony, you're a a movie guy, right? What to hear? You're kind of a movie guy too, right? Mm -hmm. You guys, you guys uh dive into the the cinematics. In 2004, police found a secret underground cinema in the Paris catacombs. You know the Paris catacombs with all the skeletons and skulls mm -hmm. on the walls? Yeah. They found a secret underground cinema in the Paris catacombs fitted with a phone line, electricity, a bar, and even movies that were recently released at the time. The police were like, what the heck? They returned three days later with like more people and they found a note that said, do not try to find us. What? That's just, okay, that's just the head, right? All right, so let me, uh, let me dig into this. I thought you guys would like this one. I wonder how old the movies were. When did this, they, said when at, this said at 2000, in 2004. So it oh. said recently released at the time. You want to know what, the, what they were watching down there? <laughs> um, 2004, what was out there, yeah. Niggas was watching Shrek down there. I feel like you had to be like a really intense like moviegoer to do this. I don't think people were watching like Up. <laughs> so, nah, so in 2004, you know, you know, Bad Boys, The Matrix Reloaded, that was all like 2003. Whoa, you know, wait, you're not looking at anything right now? This is memory? Oh, this is off the top. So 2004, The Incredibles, I, th I think The Incredibles came out around 2004 or five. I don't think they, I don't think they're watching The Incredibles in the catacombs. Yeah, I'm thinking they just watching something that I feel like it's like whatever was on video then. Yeah, so that's thinking like Matrix Reloaded, Bad Boys Two, maybe Pirates. Of the I feel like they'd be watching like art films or something creepy down there. Pirates of the Caribbean is too cute for the catacombs. I feel like they were watching The Secret. <laughs> that's what they did—the induction to all the people who wanted to join the secret organizations. Like, yeah, you gotta get watch this. The Secret first. Never well, let me, let me uh, tell you more information so you can get, to get a sense of who these people were. Uh, so, obviously, the officers were completely at a loss. They still don't know who built or used uh, one of any of this. Uh, so, there were two swastikas painted on the ceiling. Here we go. Uh, there were Celtic cross, crosses and several stars of David. It seems like those uh, don't coincide with each other. Uh, it says, we don't think it's extremist. Some sect or secret society, maybe, but there are a number of possibilities. Uh, it said members of the forces sports squad responsible um, for, uh, they're responsible for policing the 170 miles of tunnels, caves, galleries, and catacombs that are underneath that part of Paris. No. Um, and uh, that's weird to like have, that's what you have to like be security for. Um, but they basically entered a network through a drain um, and there's really like no access at this part. So behind that, there's a tunnel and there's a desk and a, cl a closed circuit uh, TV camera set to automatically record images of anyone passing. Uh, and it also triggers a tape of dogs barking 
to frighten people off. Uh, it's a shitty security system. <laughs> um, but it says that if you go further, the tunnel opens into a vast 400 square meter cave uh, that's 18 meters underground, like an underground amphitheater with terraces cut into the rocks and chairs. So this is where they found a full-size cinema screen, projection, projection equipment, uh, tapes of a wide variety of film, including 1950s film noir classics. That seems like it would be what they're fucking watching mm -hmm. down there. And more recent thrillers. So maybe some scary movies and stuff like that, which is wild. Final, Final Destination. <laughs> Final Destination. There's way scarier stuff than that to watch in a catacombs. That is that would be a lit place to watch some scary movies. I ain't Anything would be scary watching it in the catacombs. Yeah. Yeah. For real. I would watch Frozen in there and be like, oh God, no. Oh. <laughs> Frozen. Oh, yeah. But get this, it says none of the films were banned or even offensive. So they were just they were chilling. They were chilling. I mean, the swastikas, no one really paints swastikas and then chills, but. But you know what? They could have did that just as a deterrent. Like, That's what I think. like, like they, let's, let's paint some, some swastikas on here and then we'll paint a story of David too so they won't know who the organization who the is. They just thought, yeah, we're going to put a Black Panther fist up. And mm -hmm. just for shits and giggles, uh, I don't know, Boy Scouts. <laughs> like, you don't know where to even start thinking like who's going to be a part of Mm -hmm. That way, everybody that's researching this stuff is discombobulated. We look right. <laughs> David. We, we got <laughs> There's nothing to connect. <laughs> like, oh, we don't know where to start. That's crazy. So it says no, no, no films were banned. None, none were offensive. There was a smaller cave next door that had been turned into an informal restaurant and bar. I don't know who's eating down there, but I would, I, I would have a drink down there. It said there was bottles yeah. of whiskeys, oh, wow. uh, other spirits. Behind the bar, tables and chairs, a pressure cookie, a pressure cooker was in there. <laughs> they, they were really a, chilling. They, they had an Instapot. They were doing. <laughs> oh. They were making beans oh. down there. But here's the thing: a whole thing was ran off of a professionally installed electricity system, and there were at least three phone lines down there. Uh, so they, this was not just them setting up shop. Like they were, they had a whole clubhouse down there. It said. Three days later, when police returned, accompanied by experts from the French Electricity Board to see where the power was coming from, the phone and electricity lines had been cut, and a note was lying in the middle of the floor that says, do not try to find us. Wow. That is weird. Yo, that's, that's dope. If they had electricity and a phone line down there, they definitely had their own like CCTV as well. They were monitoring as well while they were trying to be monitored. I guarantee it. Would y'all do this? I will go. If, if somebody invited you, if, if they pulled up and they were like, yo, I just installed all this stuff. It's really illegal, but come down. We got a pressure cooker. We got some drinks and we got some movies. You guys the are going to the catacombs? Absolutely. They, they would have to leave with something else as the, than the pressure cooker to be the first sale. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but I'm like, they would have, we got free drinks. We got movies. We got the pressure cooker. I'd be like, all right, you had me at the free drinks. Let's do it. Movies is what would have got me. We got the full projector screen. We got the movie set up. I'm like, man, it's going to be cool down there. Yes. So Time catacombs, bones, that doesn't throw you off. It being illegal, nothing. Nah, I ain't worried about that. No, no, really. like, huh? I said, I, would, I can imagine. I would just imagine the people going down there with like little blankets because it's chilly. It's just watching like, like chill movies and shit down in the catacombs. This is crazy. Yeah. That's a nice day spot right there. The Y'all eating down there? Hmm? Y'all eating down there? If I got hand sanitizer? Yeah. I got hand sanitizer. I'm I'm straight. You bringing your own food, Tony? Yeah. What's yeah. the catacomb snacks? <laughs> Fig Newtons. <laughs> Fig Newtons? Tony would have thrown this whole operation off because if they saw the swastikas, the Star of David, and then some Fig Newtons package, they wouldn't have known what the hell. <laughs> What's happening in here? These ain't even movie snacks. <laughs> Where the hot dogs in there? The in there. Oh, man. That's funny. I just like the idea of throwing the police off on purpose. Oh, man. I the, the scary part would have been going to the bathroom by yourself down there. Yeah. Like that's where the one part like you with everybody walking as bathroom. a group. Well I'm saying, like it, it has to be some bathroom. It has to be somewhere for people to pee if they drink it. Yeah, that's true. What well, if you just had to pee in the little well, but in this well that you're peeing in, you're surrounded by the skeletons. That's, that's like the dynamic. It's like skeletons all around. They got this little hole in the ground. 
that you mm. pee in. Kind of like, kind of like the Dodger Stadium trough, but it's uh, like trash. skeletons and stuff. That's pretty dope, though. Like to see actual, the actual bones still there. That'd be dope. and the fact that they got 170 miles of this. You know how big? You know how much real estate that is? That's wild. That's why somebody was like, went down there and they were like, I'm coming back tonight. <laughs> miles. I don't know. That's, that's might be a little scary. I don't know what, well, like they, they just installed a whole electricity system too. They that's have light switches and shit. That's crazy. That is a long drive. How much, how, what's like 170 miles away from LA? Um, is that still in California? Oh, definitely. Yeah, you're still in California. That's 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 a little past San Diego, depending on how fast you're driving. 170 miles. So San Diego is about two, two or some change. Nah, so like, two or some change. It ain't 200 that, miles away. Nah. San, San Diego. Usually, San Diego? usually, if you like on a freeway going the speed limits we have here, a uh, three-hour drive is usually two two hundred and twenty miles, maybe. 124 right. miles. It's 124 miles away. Huh. What did I say? Because you said it was 170, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, so I was doing the math at like doing 70 past, miles an yeah. hour. I was doing the, yeah, yeah, I was doing the math at like doing 70 miles an hour. It's, you get there usually in two hours. So that was just doing it at 140. That's why I said it's close to like San Diego. So what are we looking at? Fresno from LA? Maybe Fresno? Bakersfield? Fresno? Bakers, think- yeah, Bakersfield. Oh, wait. A little past yeah. Bakersfield. There's dead people bones for that long? I mean, if, if the catacombs are all dead body parts, then yeah. But I get that many people died. I didn't assume that the catacombs was all, that's all the dead people? I, ain't that what catacombs are? I don't, I don't really know what the catacombs are. Where the bodies come from? I'm, I'm, I'm ignorant to this part right here. I'm familiar with the catacombs, but I'm not familiar with where the bodies came from. Yeah, catacombs I, is a great word, too. Yeah, I yeah, enjoy yeah. saying it. <laughs> That's a dope what rap name. In the catacombs? Battle, give it up for catacombs. Low key. <laughs> All right. Catacombs are human-made subterranean passageways for religious practice. Oh. Any, any chamber used as a burial place is a catacomb, uh, uh, although yeah. the word is commonly associated with the Roman Empire. Is it not burial? You said burial? It's not burial? 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 Yeah. It's burial? Is it B U R I A L? <laughs> no. Oh, okay. It's uh, it's B U R U E A L. Oh, okay. My bad. My bad. Yeah, no, I'm just kidding. Yeah, no, I'm just kidding. It, you were right. Oh. I just wanted to. <laughs> I just made up a word that was burial. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's why they bury FBI agents from the. Federal Bureau of Investigation. They buried in the burial. <laughs> they buried in the burial. Big <laughs> Hoover is in the burial. His bureau, name. like Federal Bureau of Investigation. Bureau is one of those words where bureau. I see, it. and my my brain just instantly has a heart attack when I see it. Like if I gotta read something and bureaus on there, my brain's like. <laughs> just, I remember that Nate Jackson joke when he was like. He's like, he's, there's a dude, he did a joke at a, uh, at a halfway house. He's like, dude, you got to stop being so funny. He's like, why? He's like, because when you make me laugh too hard, I have a seizure. And he's like, I just started firing him off. And dude was like, <laughs> <laughs> he would commit so hard to that joke. Oh, and it's literally like, blah, 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 blah. Uh, <laughs> 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 oh, man. <laughs> Having me laughing, man. Nate Jackson is funny, bro. Nate he, he Jackson is funny. So hard in Japan. Nah. <laughs> All right, for sure. Well, I don't know. I mean, I, I feel like if I were to go and watch a horror movie in a catacombs, I'd be, I don't know. I feel like I would have to talk to I feel to like somebody. I would see you there, Pat. You said what? I feel like I would see you already there. Like if I showed up, oh, Pat. Tony! <laughs> Pat would definitely be there. Pat would be. Yeah. Pat would be like. He would be like a crowd favorite, a club favorite. They'd be like, yeah. How long you been coming here? Oh, since they started it, it just randomly, I just happened. I get tattoos down. I'm here. the one who wrote the note just to <laughs> just to do it. Don't try to find us. Uh-huh. <laughs> what are you doing, Patrick? Hang on one second. Just 
<laughs> we weren't even like, we weren't even a secret society. I was just asking. No, but for real, I feel like if I watched a horror movie like The Ring or something underground next to all these bones, I'd get, I don't know, I'd be kind of messed up. I'd, I'd need to talk to somebody. And if I needed to talk to somebody, Ooh. I would have better help. Mm -hmm. Now, better help, <laughs> see what I did there? Uh, better yeah. help will assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist. You can start communicating in un under 24 hours. Uh, it's not a crisis line, it's not self-help, it's professional counseling done securely online, which is perfect during this quarantine lock-in. Um, a lot of people can't get you know, the, the, the proper help that they need, and BetterHelp got you on that, okay? There's a broad range of expertise available, which may not be locally available um, or available at all in this lock-in. Uh, the service is available for clients worldwide, and you can log into your account anytime and send a message to your counselor. Uh, you'll get timely and thoughtful responses, plus you can schedule weekly or uh, weekly video or phone sessions so you won't ever have to sit in uncomfortable waiting rooms with people who are coughing, all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. BetterHelp uh, is also committed to facilitating great therapeutic matches so they make it easy and free to change your counselor. That's one thing I can speak of. I've, I'm with a new uh, therapist right now, and it took me three other therapists to find this one because they made it difficult with the, the program that I was going through. So the fact that they offer this and it's at no charge and they make it easy like that is an amazing thing. Uh, BetterHelp is also affordable, than, more affordable than traditional offline counseling and financial aid is available. Um, they also want you to start living a happier life today. So visit their website and read some of the testimonials that they are posted daily. Um, you can check it out at betterhelp.com forward slash reviews. Now, uh, today, you can go to betterhelp.com forward slash D-I-Y-S, that is B-E-T-E, I'm sorry, B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P, and join over 800,000 people taking change in their mental health with the help of experienced professionals. And a special offer for you guys listening right now, you get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com forward slash D-I-Y-S. That's right. You get 10% off your first month first month at betterhelp.com forward slash D-I-Y-S. Now, speaking of better help, uh, this is not speaking of better help at all, but I got a, I got a Tony story, man. This is in the animal lane. It's kind of sad, but it's kind of ironic, all right? I just read this online. In World War II, the Russians actually trained dogs to run under German tanks with bombs on their backs. Mm. So they basically trained these dogs to like, like they would basically like point at a, a, a tank, they'd run over, get underneath the, the, uh, the tank, and then they would detonate the bomb, blow the dog up and the tank, right? Horrible, horrible, horrible idea. But get this, since these niggas trained with Russian tanks, <laughs> when the actual war started, they were, they were only, they only knew the Russian tanks. So they were, <laughs> So they were running under their own tanks and blowing them up instead. And when I read that, I was like, that's oh. what <laughs> you get. <laughs> that's what you get. <laughs> Poor well, dog, man. What's crazy is like, it would think, I would think that maybe they could like put something in the dogs, like teach the dog to carry the grenade or like a belt of grenades and put that under the tank versus having to put it all under them all around them and blow up the doll, but I, I don't know. I feel like that was excessive. These niggas fight bears, though. <laughs> don't give a damn about an animal. <laughs> you seen that kid fighting, like, learning how to wrestle a bear? No, nah, I see that. Ah, I wish I pulled it up. You rush it? <laughs> <laughs> they don't play out there, man. They big. Yo, uh, it's a cold game, man. Like, you know, but they, the Russians were looking at it like, yo, we losing too many lives. When you, if you look up the number of how many Russians died during World War II, you, your head will explode. They had the really? big, I think, I think the last time I looked that up, I think the Russians had the biggest casualty rate in the, in the World War. In any World War? Uh, just for the numbers of World War II, I think. Two um, or one? 26 million. 26 million. Uh, so 26 million. Damn. That's a lot. That's everybody in New York State dying today. That's crazy. 
Wait, hang on. Let me see. Let me get more. Everybody in New York out of here tonight. <laughs> Wait, what was the uh how many people did Colio kill? Mm-hmm. I have no idea. Well, ac- according to my uh, expert uh, source, Wikipedia, you guys might have heard of it. Uh, it says that this was the deadliest conflict in history. Estimated 70 to 85 million people perished. Yeah. Uh, of those, yeah, it says an estimate of USSR losses at 26 million. That's a big chunk. Yo, 80, 80 million people being murdered. That is crazy. How many people are in New York? I thought the, I thought the whole state, the population was like twenty some million for the whole state. Dang, California too? Is California, it more or less? No, California is more. California is like thirty something. Might be forty now. Shoot. Damn, that's more than California uh, and New York got out pop, of here. Population of New York uh, is eight point three million. Population of Los Angeles. It's no, that's New York City. Yeah. New York City. New York State? Yeah. Let me see. The population of New York State is 19.45 million. Oh, so that's everybody in New York completely. You can probably throw Jersey in there. Mm-hmm. California is 39.5 million. Man, they're close to 40, man. Yeah. California is the, the most populated state, right? Um, I, I I would assume every time I go driving because even California, during this quarantine, like Texas is number two. I think. Damn, we have many people as Texas. People so. need to stop moving out here, man. It's too. It's full. <laughs> it's I'm telling full. you, Texas at 29 million. Yeah, we got point. Uh, we got yeah, Texas is less. We got, yeah, Texas. we got a whole 10.5 million more to Texas. Damn. Texas is huge. Texas, Texas is. Texas, what, two or three days to drive through? Oh, it, it's seven days to drive through Texas. That's what it's <laughs> like. Why wow. Texas is the worst? Why? It's just It's flat to- land. It's, fl- it's all flat land. Like, it's easy to get. Uh, when, I was drove, when I drove through from St. Louis through, I can't remember if I did New Mexico or part of Texas. It might have been New Mexico, but. You get you get hypnotized by the road, like because all you do is seeing like the white line, oh, and man. it's just complete darkness, and there's no like distinguishing landmarks to like kind of grasp your eyes. So like you're literally, I I remember driving, listening to something, and then I would just kind of like fade off, not necessarily go to sleep, because I was still awake, but I wasn't aware of my being, and I would wake up and check the song, and I was like four songs away from the song that I was listening to. But I can't remember anything that happened in the last ten minutes. That's dangerous as hell. You was high. <laughs> no, you was on I did. A, I yeah. I was. I, it was literally that. It was literally autopilot because it's not a whole lot of curves and anything like that, and mm-hmm. you don't see anything, and it's dark, and your headlights are only like going so far, and all you literally see is the white lines on the road. Yeah. And it's it's pitch black. There are no street lights or anything like that. No overhead lights. It's dude. It is. Really? It, yeah, it's scary to do by yourself. Ain't no street lights? Well, not, not like not, that. I don't like the road road. Like, once you go through a city, you'll see something, and then it, it'll just be dark. Like, driving through Texas, New Mexico. New Mexico will give you something more visually in the daytime. In the daytime. In the daytime. Yeah. When you're driving at night. Nothing in the day or night. Yeah, and man. How many times have y'all driven through Texas? It seems like you guys are very well-versed. I, I did through but it was just like I, I went from New Mexico to Dallas um, you know like East East Texas drives and stuff like that it just seemed like it just took forever bro I had to it's go a couple crazy. times because uh when I was with Tough Mudder because they would always have it like they Tough Mudder loved like those flat places because they could put their, their field and their obstacle course out so Texas was like one of their favorite places to go man and it was ugh no Ugh. Like Not when you drive to the Pacific Northwest, it's a lot of beauty in that. Like you got winding mm-hmm. roads, you got mountains, you got trees, Man. forces that you're driving through. PCH is a great drive. Oh mm-hmm. my god. PCH beautiful. doesn't even make it seem like it's that long. It's beautiful. Mm-hmm. Texas gives you none of that. I got an interesting story for y'all. So imagine this. Imagine your uh I, Abelita, I don't know how to say that. Imagine you're 
grandma. Grandma. Goes to the hospital. Um, and your, the hospital says, not only did she die, she was cremated, right? Mm-hmm. So you lost your grandma. Sucks. For about a month, you're mourning. Might even had a funeral. And then out of nowhere, she calls you. And she's like, hey, uh, can you pick me up? A month later, she just calls you like, hey, where's everybody? Can somebody come to the hospital and pick me up? That happened. That freaking happened. So this happened in Ecuador. Uh, There was a huge mix up in the hospital. And uh, she was 74 years old, Alba Maruri. And she was in a, uh, she, went to, she went to the hospital and after a mix up, they told the, her family that she died of coronavirus and was cremated. Uh, <laughs> uh, she was, but she was really in a three week coma. And uh, so the family was informed that she'd passed of COVID-19 on March 27th. Uh, after uh, what was presumed to be her body was cremated, the ashes were sent to the family. So they even got them and they were just like, oh, abuela. Wow! then last week on april 16th now remember this all happened they were told this on march 27th so this was three weeks later she woke up from her coma called her sister to come pick her up (laughs) they presumed she had been dead for three weeks so the call was quote shocking to say the least uh and they they you know as obviously now they're like it's a miracle for nearly a month we thought she was dead yeah. But I'm just thinking like, oh, and the officials have to reimburse them because they paid for that cremation. <laughs> so they did all the paperwork. They did the funds. It didn't say if they had like an actual funeral in three weeks. It seems like they, they might have. I'm sure they did. Fam. Wow. Some type of memorial system. And she called her sister too, Ara, to come pick her up. That's crazy, uh, man. <laughs> <laughs> initially you think it's a ghost on the other end like for real from the great beyond but what, what's it like where you are well i'm at the hospital man you've been in several times you used to work here <laughs> that's what's that's what's crazy because it would be like a ghost but her tone wouldn't be yeah. mystical at all it'd be like yo what's up <laughs> where I'm you like, at man, i'm out of here man they got me sitting yeah. in this wheelchair bring you out in the wheelchair and i'm just waiting for you it's not even like, oh, Patrick. It's like super casual. <laughs> they would come in super deep. Always remember that you can do anything you put your mind to. <laughs> God gave me a pass. I'm here to tell you something. It was just like, hey, you got a cute Uber? <laughs> don't, don't, don't let that happen to me. Like, I, I'm, the, I'm the, the, the person that everybody thinks is dead. Mm-hmm. Don't let that happen to me. And I know. About they the don't know. Oh, I'm having a good time on them phone calls. Oh, man. I'm not even going to call nobody. I'm going to just <laughs> show, show up. up. I'm going to just show up and stand in your living room when you walk in. Man. She should have. At if night. She was 70. <laughs> at night. She could have. She should have Ubered. Oh, and just my God. Knocked at that, night. Stood outside the window. That would have freaked them out. Like if you could, if you could keep it going for a week, just keep it going oh. for a week. sneak into the house and like be cooking something. Somebody comes down, they see you, they run back out of the kitchen, they'll grab everybody else. You to left out the back door. Can you imagine the fun I would have. I would but just walk into the kitchen slowly while you cooking. Like <laughs> and I say nothing. I saw Grandpa Tony. No, you, you didn't. wouldn't say nothing. I'm mil- Hopefully they won't freak out and shoot the ghost. But <laughs> fight it. Why would they shoot the ghost of their grandma, though? I don't know. It's just, you never know what people do when they're scared. The flight part. That's I would feel that. Oh, my God. But she was 74, so she probably didn't move that fast. So her getaway would have been trash. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just been like trying I'm to go. You for the prank, and then you crack your knees. <laughs> It's like that's that's Bill Murray on Zombie Land all over again. <laughs> <laughs> he went out the worst way possible, man. man. Uh, now here, here's a question too. Okay, so they they did the mix up, so that means the family didn't know that they lost a grandparent. No, they did. 
with the family that actually lost somebody, they knew. Yes. Oh, you're talking about the person who was. Who I'm was talking about the actual human. person that. Oh, died. yeah, 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 yeah. They have. They family, probably. That family is like, y'all heard from uh. <laughs> And they've been cremated and all of that. They can't even like get the. You body. can't even find them at the hospital. <laughs> another, another, like, family, another family has your grandmother's ashes at bakery. <laughs> Name something else though. <laughs> the Damn, one. that sucks. That's actually a worse story than this one, because this one had a happy ending. <laughs> yeah, th- yeah, it is a super tragic. Man. That other family just got a free cremation out of it, but they don't even think they know. You mean the awkward pickup of the ashes? Like, oh, yeah. man. The ashes was, I think this is yours. Mm. You take the name off of the... Here you go. You just peel the name off. Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, That's totally. Like a sticker? It was a sticker? <laughs> what if they had a... Hi, my name is tag on the... <laughs> you write it in and they scratched it out already. <laughs> <laughs> just crossed out Lauren. <laughs> oh man, it's for you. That's really awkward. Yeah, y'all play, y'all play way over. too much. We scattered some over earlier last because <laughs> we thought it was awkward. Oh. Hey guys, you know what else is awkward? Having too much pubic hair. So mm. today, our sponsor Manscaped is here to make sure that your balls are smooth while your partner is playing with them. Wow, that was actual copy. That was that was that was literally what the company told us to say. Oh, I, I didn't even, I didn't even why, know it was. This is I why I love I love Manscaped because they give us the coolest they copy. Don't care. And they're like, hey man, because I mean, here's the thing: we're pushing a product that is for your balls. It is for grooming your balls. Get your balls as smooth as eggshells. And it's like you probably, it literally says you're probably holding your balls right now while you're listening to this. Why not make them smooth? (laughs) Why not make them smooth? Uh, That's why we love Manscaped. So they're here to promote clean hygiene when it comes to shaving, thanks to their Lawn Mower 3.0. So this is a only men's brand dedicated to below the waist grooming, okay? While you're probably looking for new things to do at home, why not? become an expert manscaper okay we've we've been we've been using this product for almost what eight nine months now um highly recommended it's forever changing the grooming game with the perfect package 3.0 there's these are precision engineered tools for your family jewels hello i like that yeah a little rhyme right there yeah Uh, they also right now have a, a perfect package 3.0 kit, which comes with the new and approved Lawnmower 3.0, which is waterproof, cordless, it's a body trimmer, and it has a ton of other liquid formulations to round out your manscaping routine. Routine. Uh, this third generation trimmer features a cutting edge ceramic blade to prevent manscaping accidents. Millions of balls are about to be nick free thanks to Manscaped's advanced skin safe technology. So inside the perfect package, you'll find the Manscaped Crop Preserver, an anti-chafing ball deodorant and moisturizer. Um, Mm -hmm. And you could subscribe to the perfect package and get a new replacement blade refill uh, for your lawnmower trimmer. uh, And it gets delivered to your door every three months. Uh, So make sure you're always fresh and clean. So for a limited time, uh, subscribers get not one, but two free gifts, all right? The Shed Travel Bag, which is a $40 ad, uh, and the patented high performance anti-chafing manscaped boxer briefs which are just i love them aren't they great oh god they great? that's so it's like great. a silk hug it's like a it's penis a silk hug, hug but it's still airy enough to like you can get air in there so your balls don't get lost so i love manscaped boxers do you understand what I i'm saying even, again? they're so good you might run them back without cleaning them uh, just kidding. Don't do that. This is the perfect package for your perfect package. Okay. This is get, you can get 20% off plus free shipping. If you use our code D I Y S at manscaped.com. So do yourself a favor and always choose the right tools for the job. That's right. So get 20% off and free shipping with the code D I Y S at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com. Just use the code D I Y S make playing with your balls. The best part of your day. Thanks, Manscaped. All right. So I got so excited, I flipped the whole show and uh, did all the conspiracies at the top. <laughs> we going to end with a couple stories. Tony is a huge Bulls fan. Uh, you've been to a bunch of Bulls games in Chicago, I'm assuming, right? Actually, no. No, uh, really? Yeah, we, we didn't have a bread like that when I was in Chicago. So uh, I didn't go to – I didn't see the Bulls live until I went to a Bulls-Lakers game. Out here? 
Yeah, when Derrick Rose what? was on the squad. Yeah, so. Oh, okay. Have yeah. you ever, um, like, visit the practice facility or anything? Um, no. Okay. Nope. You know what? When you are from that city, you miss a lot of the tourist attraction stuff. No because, key. like, I never went inside of the arch. I know that you can go. There's an elevator what? that takes you inside the arch, and they right. have windows at the top where you can look through the windows and overlook the city and see it over in the Illinois side. But I've never done that in my life. I've never been to the Hollywood sign. That's actually very true. Yeah, you, take, you take it for granted. Because you're like, oh, I'll, do it. I'll do it at some point. I see it every day. I, ain't, I ain't watch them on TV. I was like, the <laughs> Bulls. Uh, well, the Bulls documentary about Michael Jordan just came out. Everybody's talking about Scottie Pippen. But I ain't here to talk about what everybody else is talking about. I'm here to talk about how Carmen Electra revealed that she had sex with Dennis Rodman all over the Chicago Bulls practice facility. He put a blindfold on her, put her on a motorcycle, and took off the blindfold in the middle of the court where they proceeded to smash uh, <laughs> center court as well as all of the, you know, the lockers, the, the back place where they have, the, I guess, the massage, uh, the massage chairs. They was getting it in. The physical mm -hmm. room, even the weight room, and the court. Uh, <laughs> and they were eating popsicles the whole time. Concession area, too? Concession? <laughs> were they in there? I didn't say that. that they, they, probably, they probably took that part out for FDA. Yeah. Go in there, man. Jeez. That popsicle thing makes me think they was on drugs because you're running hot. Right. Dennis Rodman just looked like he'd leave a mess behind after sex. I, don't, I, I feel like I wouldn't touch anything in that, uh, in that facility for several okay. years. Dennis Rodman looks like the type where he'll be mid-stroke and he'll pull out and pee on the floor and then just finish stroking. Like Ooh. that's what that's what I get from Dennis Rodman. Right? He's not course, he's not he, he's not giving no towels. He's not going to get no towels. He's like, man, let's just let's go take a shower together. And they never take a shower, just get back on a motorcycle, he drops off at a Wendy's or something. Like that's what I get from Dennis Rodman. When well they, what I didn't get from Dennis Rodman was sex appeal. Because when I was a kid growing him up, I was like, Who's this monster playing basketball? <laughs> but turns out he done bagged some of the hottest models. In the 90s, it was like, what, Tyra Banks, um, oh, Cody Braxton? Yeah, Tyra Banks. No, no, was it Viv or Vivica Fox? I haven't heard of either one of these before. I think it was Tyra Banks. And I know he bagged McDonough. Uh, he was telling, I interviewed Dennis Rodman when I was doing this thing for Empire Records. And they, I don't think they're going to release it because they signed a deal with somebody else. So all the episodes we had did previously uh, just got kind of, can but he was telling me how he broke his penis like three different times. Oh, I'll tell you. He oh told God! Me an interview too. Yeah, I think was... I'd stop having sex after the first break. Oh. I, would, I would take it easy. That sounds <laughs> terrible, man. Jesus, broke. What are you pumping? Hey, broke man. though. But okay, hey, so, man. okay, so Madonna. Okay. Oh wait, what were you gonna say? On the penis breakage. <laughs> Do y'all ever be scared when the girl was riding tough that she just go? No, I think that's how it happened. Isn't that how he said it happened? I, he, did, he, didn't go into, he didn't go into it, but I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure that's, that accounts for probably like Ow! Ow! Because I don't like when girls ride like that anymore. Anyway. When, when they get into it, I kind of bring my hands in just for the mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just, mm -hmm. hey, hey, now. Just don't <laughs> overextend and then, Mac! And then I'm just like... Ah! Jesus, man. that sounds horrible. Because <laughs> if, if you use the word break, you probably oh, hear it. Oh, my God. You probably this, hear it. And then, and then it just does that. Uh, ah, ah, on the gun. <laughs> on the gun. Ah, oh. I don't like when girls ride like that anyway. You shouldn't be like. Man, bro. My just second back and forth. forth. Back and forth. Back that and thing. forth. Not the up and down, man. I hate back that, man. I, I did. Down here. Be careful on the, on the landing. Man. Because it's, it's no way. College not know how to do that. And she, every time she was like, da, ah, ah, like thinking she was doing something, talking shit. And I was just looking at her like, fam, chill out. <laughs> she was holding <laughs> shit for, for, for some like leverage, like, yeah. <laughs> Yo, that, oh. <laughs> you know you rocking with this? <laughs> <laughs> Till you hear that damn noise that. Oh, oh man, bro. <laughs> Whoa. What is wrong with you, <laughs> psychopath? You're fine, man. Take it easy, ladies. 
Uh, All right, well, let me, let me just show you the list. Madonna. Uh, Vivica A. Fox. Right. Tony Braxton. Right. Carmen Electra. Yeah. Thought the list was longer. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's a that's a no, that's solid. That's a quality list, bro. That's solid. Hey, that's quality. I had no clue. Quality list for somebody that had that many lip piercings and tattoos. Yeah, that's that's solid. Yeah, 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 that's it seemed like he sort of went out of his way to do stuff that made us want. I don't know if it was marketing or if he genuinely wanted to wear dresses. I, I, don't, I don't really get it. I feel like he overdid it. And him, by him doing that, being more comfortable with himself, that appealed to more ladies. Like when a man is comfortable with who he is, women be like, okay, okay. And then when they find out you're not gay and you're that comfortable with yourself, they be like, get my panties right here. But yeah. hella, hella dudes are that comfortable, minus the, you know, dress, cheetah head, and painted nails. They but, still but that, a lot of men that are, are, are comfortable with themselves, sometimes they can come off as misogynistic or, like, too extra macho. Too the masculine. The angle, they, it looks like he's more accepting to different thoughts, different lifestyles, different stuff like that. And mm -hmm. so that appeals to a lot of women because that shows an extra level of confidence. Like, mm -hmm. oh. He don't even care what people think. So you think that was the same thing with Prince? Oh, yeah, definitely with Prince. Because he, he was so firm in just what he wanted to do. Mm -hmm. What y'all going to do? He just stood firm in it with confidence. It was like, here are my panties. <laughs> Wait, Prince thought, said that? Oh. Prince was one that I didn't, I didn't figure out. Prince was, he was so... He had a lot of feminine ways and behaviors, with, especially with dress. Uh, but women just flocked to him, bro. Like they flocked to Prince. Like he nobody. weirdly didn't come off as gay, though. It, it was really just the attire, right? Yeah, it was yeah, it was more feminine and with the attire than anything. Like halt, like tying up his shirt and tying up his hair and wearing gauchos and heels. That's how rappers dress like, now, though. That is true. It, re it came back full circle. That minus is true. Flurry, yeah. fluffy blouse. Mm -hmm. But I don't think that. I think that's next. I think niggas are going to start doing the, like, the, 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 what is that shit called? The ruffle. Uh, they're going to bring up the, uh. got to do this. The Jerry Seinfeld. Yeah. <laughs> Pirate yeah. shirt. Pirate shirt, man. Pirate shirt. A lot of yeah. people sleep on Seinfeld, man. <laughs> I sleep on Seinfeld. It's a great show, man. What season should I start with? Because I heard the first one isn't that good. Yeah, it, it definitely gets better as they go on. Yeah. Uh, I would I would say if you come in in like season three and just, you know, go go from there. Really? That's two whole seasons that they're missing out on. I, w I would love for you to just watch it from the start. Because the first season is not a long season. It's like short. What? They do Seinfeld. No, they, I mean like how many? They uh I would probably say like in the teens, maybe. Maybe oh, like short. Yeah, because shows used to be like 22 to 25 episodes a season. Oh, that's right. Damn, so, they really cut down on that. They really cut down big time. And so uh, yeah. the, the first season of Seinfeld, the first couple of seasons was kind of shaky ratings-wise, so they didn't know they were going to keep it around. So it was like, but then as the show kept going on, it got more popular. And then, 25? That's, I thought that was just anime. That's like three Netflix seasons now. Man. Like one season back then. And that was the standard. Like, 22 episode season was pretty much the standard. And then Seinfeld turned down $5 million an episode to do one more season. Himself? Or the, yeah, uh, for him. They offered him $5 million per episode. He was like, nah, I'm good. Why? Wait, why, though? He just, he just felt like, you know. He had done all he could do. It was already a show about nothing. Oh, you're saying to keep going, and he didn't keep going. He no, stopped. They were they wanted him to go because because when the show went off, it was the number one show on TV, and so they were just like, "Come on, just do one more season. We'll give you five million an episode." He was like, "No." So five million times twenty two. Damn. I mean, he still ended up making it, but shit. Oh yeah, absolutely. On the on that on that back end, I'm glad that's cool. He had to cap it while it was great. I, I think it was a great go, move. Go out on top, bro. Go, go out on top. 
Going out on top always makes them want more from you. That's why he was selling out with his residency in Vegas. That's why he got the show on Netflix. That's why anytime he pops up, people are tuning in because he went out on top. Every time right. I think about this, I, I think about how The Office should have ended when Michael Scott left, and then mm. it just went. They wanted to milk it, man. That makes me so sad every time. The milk, <laughs> the milk out is the worst thing you can do to a great TV show. Right? Well, that's the thing. The executives want to see it die and not work anymore, as opposed to like letting it, making people want more. Right. Yeah, they don't give a damn about your, your show. <laughs> people, people, people wanted the same thing for great taste. Somebody just mentioned it in the comments. Like, yeah, they wanted mm -hmm. us to keep going. It's like, bro, it would have got bad. Half we were, it. We were already scraping the bottom of the barrel. Or something. Half we it. We had to re-up on the cereal one. We had to re-up on fries. It's like, bro. You gotta let it. You gotta let it die a little bit, man. So I mean, you missed our finale, man. Oh, that's what I was pissed about. I was like, <laughs> "Wait, y'all gonna end the show?" <laughs> I have to be on the road. It's like these. These are the last episodes we ever shoot. Don't so, know. <laughs> I was devastated. <laughs> Damn that! In, uh, man, you should have been. I love great taste, man. I was devastated. Man, man, oh man. Well, speaking of capping it while it's good, thank you guys so much for watching yet another episode of Damn Internet, You Scary. Thank you, Tony Baker, for popping in. It's always yeah, interesting man. to be here. Yeah, always good to have you, man. Good to have you, Tony. When you ain't on your phone and doing other things. What are you, what are you doing right now, man? It's, all, it's something doing, really interesting over here. <laughs> what I'm doing right I've been, I've, been, I've been fighting with this cash app for, for a couple weeks now. So mm -hmm. what I'm trying to do is, because a lot of people hit me up on the Cash App. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to accept the Cash Apps before they expire. Mm. Because they, they've been giving me so many problems lately that they've just been sitting in here and now they're expiring. So I'm trying to do it before they expire. So I'm just like, gotcha. oh. yeah. So I just saw on your page that uh, they're trying to, they, they might delete your page because of the voiceover videos? Yeah, because... You know, I do so many and like, you know, occasionally they'll get flagged for oh, it's my intellectual property or whatever the case. So they'll pull it and then you know when they keep pulling your videos, they'll be like, Yo, we could delete your page for this. <laughs> so man. they just hit me with that. Right why when we were starting the show, I got hit with that. I was like, Oh man, so, TikTok and YouTube stay pulling my shit off. Man, no, I hate I, it. I, I feel like TikTok has something against black creators, bro, because I was putting one time I put I didn't pull a song from TikTok, but I put a song that was on TikTok on my video, but I, I did it outside of TikTok because I wanted to do a special effect. And they pulled it. There's like, uh, this song has words that are copywritten or something like, but it's on, the, it's on your fucking platform. They pulled my pull? bacon and eggs video, man. I don't even have music in it. It's probably what? the gun with the kid. Call of Duty, niggas get shot dead on TikTok bro, all the time. <laughs> bro, I, I, the video I did where I, was, I did the Don't Rush Challenge, and I was acting like I was like rolling. Well, I didn't. I, that's the thing. I wouldn't even act like I was rolling. I just grabbed a cigar, and then I had some basil, and I smelled the basil in a, like a pill bottle, and then I did the cigar like this, and I came back, and it was a dude with the dick lip. Yeah, I remember that, bro. They snatched. They didn't even post it. TikTok oh, really? wouldn't even post it. It was like it goes against our guidelines. I'm, I, I was. I was like, how? I insinuated that I was rolling the blunt. It wasn't even real weed. The cigar was still a full cigar. Did they give it back? Nope. Yeah, none of my appeals work too. They 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 they've done five of my videos, dog. I'm telling you, they don't like black uh, black creators, dude. I'm I'm, I'm convinced. Cause I've heard this. I've I've never heard a white creator say they had any problem with it. And I talked to like Trevor's never had any problem. Oh, you, know, you know TikTok. All right, guys, I got to jump onto a call. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching another episode of Damn Internet. You scary. I have been your co-host Patrick Cloud. I'm to hear more. We'll see you next time on Damn Internet. Just scary. Oh. Shout out to Tony Baker. Thank you, Tony. <laughs> All right, guys. All right, y'all. All right, peace.